G'day guys and welcome to the Purebred Reds, Adelaide United Fan TV. I'm your host Ellis Gelios coming to you live outside of uh, isolation here which is uh, the new normal these days unfortunately what a change the world we're now living in but thankfully that world still has football in it sadly not on the pitch off the pitch currently but um, there's plenty to catch up on uh, it's going to be a fun field live show coming to you from the uh, now sadly redundant purebred reds studio um, which uh, is unfortunate, but um, what can you do? There's no way in which uh, we can record uh, shows out of the studio anymore because there's no games happening, so therefore there's no reason to have a guest on and to produce videos and get them out um, to the public. So uh, I am going to be doing a series of live videos uh, just to update everyone on various things which include um, the state of what's going on at Adelaide United at the moment as well as the A-League more broadly um, and uh, plenty of other things as well that are happening in football um, and uh, and not in football and we're just going to try have some fun with things as well um, but there's so much going on um, I don't know about you guys but um, I've been basically at home for two weeks now I haven't left the house properly um, this is not a virus that you want to get so I hope everyone is staying safe but I've got to say two weeks into this ridiculous new way of life um, I'm starting to feel a little bit Julian Assange so um, if anyone else is feeling the same way make sure uh, you let me know about it because um, these are weird times we're living in no more uh, going to the pub before an Adelaide United game with your close mates and, um, you know, having the kind of get out, which is watching Adelaide United play. No more of that anymore. Um, sadly, now it's just a, a case of uh, watching the Belarusian League um, in Belarus, which is the only live football going on anywhere in the world. And um, we're going to touch on that in this show later on but um there's a lot that i want to get you guys updated on some news dropped today regarding the club and it's uh not very good news at all but um unfortunately it is what it is and that news is that uh unfortunately adelaide united is going to be following in the same footsteps as uh, a series of other a-league clubs right now namely perth glory brisbane raw central coast mariners Western Sydney Wanderers, and it was reported today, Newcastle Jets will all be standing down their players, um, which is very sad, but um, it's the state of where things are at at the moment. Um, so that's going to be taking full effect. Adelaide United will be doing the same thing, um, basically freezing all football operations within the club. Uh, but luckily, uh, all staff will be paid out for the next month, which is good news for them because uh, I know, um, having heard it from the horse's mouth in a sense, that uh, there's plenty of anxiety going on with uh, people at the club whose livelihoods are at stake, just like in basically every other industry right now. So it's sad to see uh, that, um, you know, staff all over are worried, um, but it is what it is. Basically, who's going to be uh, left employed at Adelaide United throughout the next hiatus of three months, two months, six months? Is it just Nathan Cosmina? Maybe the media guy as well. Who else is needed when there's no football team? There's no coaches needed. Um, it's just a crazy scenario, but it is what it is, unfortunately. Good to see Marcos Flores has joined the live. Marcos Flores spoke greatly on the SEN SA show, the Dom and Dodzi show. Um, which is a great little podcast that you should tune into. Um, Marcos actually spoke on that um, to Travis Stodd and uh, informed people about the state of things in Argentina at the moment, which was very interesting. So thanks for sharing uh, some insights there, Marcos, the club's only ever um, Johnny Warren medalist, of course, who sat on this couch a few times and given some, uh, some great interviews, which is great. Um, now, guys, uh, we're going to get straight into it. So it's been 18 days since a ball was kicked involving Adelaide United, 18 days, and it's, it's felt like a season already. Um, basically, yeah, since then, the league has been postponed indefinitely, um, and we're now getting reports that um, Fox Sports are close to pulling the plug on the competition, which uh, is sure to have dire consequences. Um, 
obviously we knew things to an extent were already on life support. Um, a lot of speculation about whether Fox Sports would come to the party when it came to renegotiating a new TV broadcast right still, um, which will inspire, expire sorry, in two seasons' time. Um, now, because the A-League, uh, the rest of this season is in jeopardy, that has presented a loophole for Fox Sports executives whereby they can get out of their current arrangement, which leaves the A-League in an absolutely dire state. Now, if you're not aware of how things work, basically Fox Sports pay for this league to run. Um, all players within the salary cap are paid for by Fox Sports as well as uh, key critical staff members. So um, it's really, really, really hinging on Fox Sports putting their dosh into this competition for us to have a league. And right now, that is seriously under threat. James Johnson, the FFA CEO, needs to find a way to get this league finished for the season. Forget finals, they don't matter. Just give it to Sydney, who cares? I don't think anyone really does. We just need to see this league completed because that at least then guarantees Fox Sports money for another two seasons, no matter what, no matter how bad the ratings might be with certain clubs. Doesn't matter, we get Fox for at least two more seasons and thus you can have that contingency plan when eventually you may need to look at a different broadcaster. But right now, unfortunately, uh, Fox Sports are in a position where they can pull out of broadcasting this league and that is gonna just cause havoc um, and it's gonna be very sad if we get to that position. But of course, so much uncertainty, no one knows what's gonna happen uh, within the next few months but we are monitoring that closely. Now, a lot of people saying to me, well, if Fox Sports pull out, why don't Optus Sports just come to the party? Obviously, Optus got the Premier League three seasons ago. They're really uh, trying to strengthen um, their reach within the football community, having got the J-League. Um, they had the World Cup, which was a failed experiment, but uh, they, they've gone and tried to get a few other leagues as well. The, the English Women's Super League is another one. Um, and they're really looking at as many possible streams of content they can to facilitate all the talent that they've signed up there and pulled away from Fox Sports who are trying to wipe their hands clean of anything football related. Um, a lot of people say to me, well, why don't Optus just get it? I mean, surely that's a simple solution. Just give it to Optus Sports. Like, makes sense. It's the A-League. They run out of Australia. It gives them, you know, a show to highlight as well as the Premier League. Um, unfortunately, it's not that simple. And um, a lot of people don't seem to understand that Fox Sports actually pay for everything when it comes to pro producing the league. So when you rock up to Cooper Stadium on a match day and you see three trucks full of cameras, those guys are there four hours before kickoff, Fox Sports are paying them by the hour. All that goes into producing the show, obviously looking after the talents when they do their pre-game, when they do their post-game. That's all on the Fox Sports wage bill. Of the sport when they show the English Premier League, do not pay for any of those things. They pay only to redistribute a stream, which is a far lesser cost. So basically, if Optus Sports were to produce the A-League, it would cost so much more for them to do it than what they pay to have the Premier League. And when the A-League is getting such poor ratings at the moment, it doesn't make sense to, for them to be doing that. So is Optus Sport a viable, realistic alternative for this league to have some kind of survival strategy? Probably not. And um, unfortunately, people just don't seem to understand that. So personally, in my view, if Fox Sports are happy to renegotiate a much lesser value deal, which would at least keep the lights on, obviously it would mean a lesser quality product, clubs have less money to spend on um, players within the salary cap, it would mean you know various cutbacks within the clubs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but at least it keeps the lights on and at least it keeps professional football alive in Australia. Um, Fox Sports, hopefully they do that, but if they don't, I think the best thing that, that can happen is a free-to-air um, simultaneous agreement, possibly ABC and SBS. Just bring SBS back and get something with government organised so that at least this league survives going into the future because it's not looking good right now. We're in serious trouble, and if the league is not completed this season, I fear for basically football in Australia because it's a trickle-down effect. If there's no A-League, you know, what's going to happen in this country without any football? We're all going to lose our minds. 
Um, it's not all going to be about football in this video. I'm going to talk about ways that you can um, stay entertained without any um, games going on anywhere. Various things on Netflix that are coming out. Lots of great content going on. Um, so I'll talk about that very soon. But uh, I just want to get out all the news currently relating to Adelaide United. Um, so Travis Dodd mentioned on uh, the Dom and Dodzy show on SEN Sports SA just before that um, apparently uh, players are now eligible and staff members for the, um, the new job seeker payments. Um, so that's pretty interesting, going from being a professional footballer, living the high life, the, the kind of career that we all dream of, to suddenly being um, on the government payroll getting $1,500 a fortnight. Apparently that's the next avenue for players in the country, which is um, incredible to think that things have gotten to that stage this quickly, but they have. Um, so if you still are one of those people who doesn't seem to think this virus is a big deal, it is. It's literally brought the whole world to a standstill and unfortunately that is no different for A-League players and staff. Um, so I found that very interesting. Now I want to talk about how the league is going to look post-coronavirus world. We've got no idea how it will look, um, but I want to just have us all engage about how we think it might look. So. I think realistically, you've got to consider the fact that there's going to be so many things stripped back. The two things that immediately will be are probably W League and Y League, which is massively concerning. So you're not going to have a national youth competition, I think, given that that's already been highly criticised. It's only eight games every season. Um, all the youth league coaches uh, for their respective clubs think it's a bit of a joke. And so that's one thing that will probably go, I think, and we'll just go to all the A-League clubs putting their youth teams in their respective NPL competitions throughout the states. I think that's one thing that's probably going to happen, in my opinion. And the other will be um, probably no W League. Sadly, uh, as a product that doesn't guarantee much revenue, I think that that will sadly go um, with football being on life support in this country. Um, there's just no money, no cash, no investment. And with people um, most likely going to be in you know, so, such a lesser financially equipped position, you've got to just assume that a lot of things will be cut back. And so I think when things do start to normalise and football comes back in Australia, I think get ready to maybe not see the other um, football products that FFA owns, which are the Y League and W League. I think it'll be a sad day when it happens, but I think it will happen, unfortunately, just to keep the A League lights on. Um, so, yeah, tell me what you think of that. I'm very interested to know. I'm just going to read through some of these comments. So Ben Arben um, says, Optus seems the logical decision. Um, thank you, Ben. Ben uh, is obviously wary of my um, history with Optus. I did get into a bit of trouble because uh, I was one of those very vocal people who spoke out about um, the uh, quite ordinary coverage that Optus were um, producing in their first season of... Uh, having their EPL rights and then the World Cup in 2018, it was all a bit of a debacle and I did get into a bit of a tr uh, bit of trouble uh, airing my thoughts in the public arena about the state of Optus. Um, anyway, Chris Adams says his sources tells him that Optus aren't as of yet interested in the A-League. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Um, and Marcos Flores says, much love. Much love to you, Marcos. Uh, we love you. Thank you for uh, tuning into the show. Um, make sure you post any comments or questions, guys, as always, and I will address them. Um, now, player contracts. Um, this is the big one. So if this league is going to somehow continue um, and we're going to see a day where the league is complete this season, it's going to have to be before June. And we're already in April. So that looks very, very unlikely. Hence my low-key anxiety, which will be high-key anxiety in a few days' time at this rate. Um, yeah, it's, it's really like quite dire at the moment. If um, the, the league can't continue, then, you know, like I said, we're going to have the issues with Fox Sports. But players, how are they going to play for their clubs when contracts are set to expire at the end of May? Basically, they've got to get together and find a way to finish this league ASAP. I don't know how that's going to happen. Um, are you going to just do rolling contracts for the month? Um, every month that goes by where we can't see a resolution to the league being played out. That seems like the only viable alternative. Remember, 50% of the league 
is on a one-year contract. 50% of the players in the A-League only have one year left. So those contracts are all set to expire very soon. Hence the issues at hand. Um, now, another thing to uh, gloss over. The NPL. If there's no NPL Australia-wide this year because of this coronavirus, then how will FFA Cup participants be determined for when the next FFA Cup instalment happens. Now, remember Adelaide United, the current holders of that competition. But um, obviously, we're really only interested in the FFA Cup because of the NPL clubs coming back into it. And if there's no NPL competition, then how do you decide who enters the, the FFA Cup from the NPL point of view? Um, is the NPL going to become a summer competition? Um, how's that all going to play out? It's just fascinating how many potential ramifications are at play here given this uh, pandemic, which is, uh, you know, thankfully in South Australia, we're seeing some good data coming out, um, which is very comforting. But uh, Australia-wide, you're seeing a lot of uh, new cases get confirmed every day and it doesn't look like uh, we're headed in a great trajectory. Obviously, you know what's going on in Europe and other parts of the world. And uh, yeah, the sort of finish line where we can start to look at life beyond living in a what feels like an apocalypse seems to be getting further and further away from us and uh, it feels like um, you know when is that light going to be at the end of the tunnel so that we can just start seeing how things are going to unfold and obviously the FA Cup is one of those things how how's the uh, Football Federation Australia going to determine which clubs participate in that I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that um, but yeah that's also another thing to consider um, and just A-League generally, uh, news-wise, a coronavirus case was confirmed. Uh, we, th we think it's a Newcastle Jets player. They haven't given any identity as to who that person ha is. It could be from any of the Newcastle Jets teams, the senior A-League team, the youth team, or their W-League team. But uh, someone has coronavirus within the Newcastle Jets camp, so that's great. Um, that just means that uh, the league is further in jeopardy at this stage of continuing. So... Um, not good news there at all. And um, again, we've just got to sit tight and, uh, and see how all this unfolds. But, um, you know, you can see by the state of my very unhealthy hotbed coronavirus beard um, that, uh, you know, things are not looking good and um, everything's just at a standstill. And, um, yeah, we've got a lot of weeks of FIFA career managers and not doing much else with ourselves to... To just try to get through this storm of, you know, a football famine, really, um, which is sad, but it is the state that we're in. Just going to read out some more comments. Chris Adams says, why is this being broadcast on Facebook, not Zoom? Um, he also says, summer NPL, 18, 6 to 8 reserves, 8 to 10, first team, 10 to 12. Um, FFA tonight confirmed all NPL grassroots pushed back till end of May at least. There you go. Thank you for the updates, Chris Adams. Now, guys... Um, whilst there's no football on the pitch at the moment, there's plenty of stuff off the pitch uh, content-wise that you can tune into to not have yourself starved of being a football fan, which is what we all are and it's all what we are here to, to be. And um, Netflix, thankfully, have come to our rescue on that front. The English game, I haven't tuned in as yet, but uh, the reviews are absolutely brilliant about that, a show about how... Football basically became professional um, in England. Uh, so looking at the origins of uh, the FA starting up and, and all that with, I'm sure, a few fictionalized storylines thrown in. Uh, watch it. Tell me what it's like. Um, I'm yet to see it, but I've heard some great things. What I have seen is uh, Sunderland uh, Till I Die, which is fantastic. The second season of that drops uh, it has dropped, actually, today. Um, if you didn't see the first season, absolutely brilliant. Fly on the Wall documentary um, showing a club in freefall, which um, is somewhere where, you know, we've been close to being as a club with Adelaide United, but uh, thankfully it's never gotten that dire. Thankfully there's no relegation in the A-League, so um, we've never hit those kinds of lows as a club for all the success that we have had as well. But, uh, yeah, Sunderland, a very well-supported club in England, obviously, um, double relegations they suffered in recent years and so a documentary did come out in 2018 
exhibiting um, their season in the championship where uh, everything just became a complete shitstorm and uh, and they're doing a follow-up to that after they got relegated from the Premier League to the Championship and now League One. And uh, they failed to get out of League One last season and they did a documentary, documentary about that based the second season on their troubles in League One, new owners. And um, anyway, that's a really great show. I don't want to keep rambling on about um, Sunderland and the state of affairs there, but make sure you tune into that. Um, there's some other lesser known ones as well. Go watch Club de Cuevos on Netflix. It's a fictional Mexican drama about a club that doesn't exist, but uh, everything off the pitch about like politics in Mexico and like basically it's set on the premise that um, a really well-respected football owner suddenly dies and the club is left to his two children to run and they both hate each other and they both have like egocentric kind of fueled ambitions and like one of them's a drug addict and like party goer the other one um just wants the club to be run well and there's money issues and like it's a great show check it out club de cuevos it is in mexican but obviously subtitles are there for you to be able to enjoy the show um and then there's plenty of um great movies football themed films um from the past which can really light up your nostalgia um, like Bend It Like Beckham's a massive one for me. I grew up with that movie. Um, I know it's kind of a bit of a lame story, but it's great. Um, awesome movie, great memories. Um, also the Gold Trilogy, how could we forget? Santiago Munez at Newcastle United. Um, what an awesome film that was. Certainly the first and second one. The third one was just an absolute piss take. But those first two films, the Gold movies, great um, way to cure your football hangover right now. And um, there's also a few others. Um, if you haven't tuned in, there's uh, the the show about Southend City, which is run and owned by the former Manchester United players, Gary Neville, Phil Neville, uh, Ryan Giggs, and a few others, Paul Scholes. Um, and the fact that they've bought this basically like Sunday League club in England and um, they've poured heaps of money into it. And uh, they've got the club now in League Two in England, which is um, very interesting, Southend City. Um, that's a great show produced by Sky Sports. You can check that out. Um, it's not on Netflix, but uh, you can stream it um, probably illegally, but who cares? Um, that's the world we live in now. You just need to find ways to get by every day. And um, unfortunately, that's one of the best ways is just chilling out, monging out with some football stuff to watch. So um, yeah, I recommend that one thoroughly. And uh, there's also one called Summer of 92, which is uh, a true story about um, the... Uh, the Denmark team in the Euros in the 90s who, against all odds, uh, won the Euros. And um, that's a great movie. It's obviously a bi biographical movie. That's on Netflix as well, so you can check that one out. Um, and She's the Man. What a movie that was um, with Amanda Bynes, um, another one I grew up with. Um, yeah, another fantastic throwback, nostalgia, kind of centric movie that you can check out if you haven't seen it. And uh, the last one is Green Street Hooligans, which was a um, really cool movie with um, the Lord of the Rings guy. His name's escaped me, Elijah Wood, I think his name was. Um, he's the main actor in that, about an American journalist in the UK that suddenly just befriends all these football fans who are in violent football supporting firms who organise to basically bash each other up before games, which is based on true events in England, as we know. Um, the closest we've seen to that, a few Melbourne Victory games back in the day. Uh, we saw some riots at Cooper Stadium here and there. Yeah, great to relive memories of those days, not the fights. I'm not trying to condone violence, but just the rivalry being in a better position than it is today, bigger crowds, etc. Um, it certainly felt more alive back then. Just going to um, read out some more comments and questions. Marty Keo says, uh, Alex and Me is a good movie about Alex Morgan. Alex Morgan... Uh, very famous US national team women's player. Um, and obviously there's a lot going on surrounding the US women's national team politically right now. So great shout from Marty. Chris Adams said goal is overrated. Wow, that's, yeah, Chris. Um, find it hard to disagree with what old Chris has to say most of the time, but I disagree with that because I don't can't think of a you know more fun f film that's football related other than goal. Michael Spiru, here's a great question from Michael Spiru. Michael Spiru asks, Will Adelaide United youth team still exist in the post-coronavirus world? I think it will. 
uh, Michael Spiru um, actually coached with Paul Pezos, who is our youth team manager. Michael Spiru was um, the Adelaide City Reserves coach when um, Paul Pezos was the first team coach at Adelaide City Women. And uh, so, yeah, Michael knows the gaffer in charge, hence the question is asked there about the youth team, state of affairs. Uh, Michael, I've kind of answered that question. I think um, basically what will happen is the Adelaide United youth team will only exist in the, in the form of the NPL competition. Um, as far as a youth league goes, with only eight fixtures every season, when the league is basically struggling to bankroll um, having competitions proceed, I think it's highly unrealistic and probably not viable in the post-coronavirus world, sadly. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think the, full, the youth team will exist in the form that we know it to right now, but it will go on because um, there has to be a pathway for youth players in the country. And obviously, um, Adelaide United has produced some of the best talents that we've seen come out in the A-League era as Australian footballers. Um, you know, there's a list as long as my arm of them. Um, and uh, we obviously need a pathway for them. So there has to be a youth team. I, I don't doubt that one will continue to function, but just not the way we know it to right now once this pandemic passes. And we don't know when that will be, sadly. But um, it is what it is. Shout out uh, what you guys think to me. Um, is this going to go on another four weeks? Obviously, New South Wales reporting so many cases every day. Um, you know, Melbourne as well. Uh, and Queensland's a real hotbed for the for the virus. Um, did Australia act too late, um, closing the borders and um, putting all the social restrictions in place? It's um, a question a lot of people are sort of trying to weigh up. Um, personally, I think um, the government has done a great job of, of running without trying to basically cause mass panic within um, society, and that's very important in times that presents such great uncertainties and obviously you've got to remember there's two um, things at play here, a health crisis and, and an economical crisis. So um, I think the government's done its best job to just um, play things as cautiously as possible but also taking the most necessary measures. Um, South Australia seems to be leading the way uh, at flattening the curve. We're obviously reporting less and less cases every day but um, how long will we just have to lay low? Like I said at the top of the show, you do not want to get this virus. Um, there's all kinds of scary things being reported about possible long-lasting effects of, of having the virus. Even once you recover as a perfectly healthy person, there have been people who have reported reduced lung capacity of like up to 30%. Um, how proven that is, I still don't know, but um, it could permanently weaken the state of some people's immune systems. Scientifically, we still don't know a lot about it, so you just don't want to get this virus, hence everyone laying low, um, which is uh, really concerning. Marty Keo says, Sunderland Till I Die is a must-watch. Season 2 comes out tonight on Netflix. It's, I checked it uh, before the show started here, Marty. It is actually, uh, it's dropped, so you can go and check that out on Netflix as we speak um, if you are really bored of life without football, which is a lot of us. Um, have you got any crazy football manager stories or FIFA career mode stories to share with me? I'm very interested. Um, love my FIFA career modes. Been doing them since uh, basically FIFA 2003, the first ever game I've got on Xbox, original Xbox. Um, who doesn't love a manager mode? They've uh, advanced them more and more as the years go by, but um, sadly the latest FIFA by EA Sports has got a lot of glitches. Um, which is really annoying and I've kind of been steered away from playing it. But uh, now that no one has anything to do with their lives, Football Manager, um, everyone tells me it's um, a great game to get into for the time to pass because there's so much that you have to do uh, to sustain getting a kick out of it. Um, basically, you control every avenue of everything that there is um, involving a club um, in a football league anywhere in the world. So, um, yeah, for those avid Football Manager um, players, please let me know uh, how your careers are going on that, whether you've done one with Adelaide United. The A-League is one of the only registered leagues on Football Manager, so you can actually play with fully licensed kits and players. Um, so yeah, that's um, always been something I've been interested in, but never really gotten around to playing. Uh, we've got another question in through from Chris Adams. So Chris says, Won the ACL with AUFC in my FIFA career mode last year. Signed, pro, uh, signed Pado 
from China on a Bosnian free, uh, and he'd led us to continental glory. There you go. Um, great story there, Chris. Um, yeah, that's another thing you can do. So if you do manager modes with um, any of the A-League teams on FIFA, you can play in the Asian Champions League. It's not licensed as the Asian Champions League because Konami hold the Asian Champions League rights and Konami produce uh, Pro Evo, which is the FIFA rival game. But uh, there's a makeup sort of ACL style Asian region cup continental challenge that you can do as an A-League team. So it basically replicates um, the Asian Champions League and uh, yeah, get around to doing one. Um, it's all all kinds of fun when you get heavily invested and um, you're working with uh, the kind of A-League transfer restraints that are in place as we know. Um, so yeah, that's another really great way to pass the time by. Um, how are things going to look for Adelaide United going forward? Uh, we did have Gert Jan Verbeek um, comment to a Dutch media outlet saying um, he sees the freeze of the league go for at least another month but beyond that he has no idea what's going to happen. Here's an interesting conundrum. Um, when the league can happen again whenever that may be, um, are they going to fly Gert Jan Verbeek back for like four games in two weeks? Like is there any point in doing that or do you just give it to Carl Viet and, um, and Eugene Galekovic on the sidelines? And uh, the last thing I really want to propose to everyone is um, this is a time of unity. Everyone needs to be um, as unified as possible to get through such an unprecedented event within the history of mankind. But um, you've got to ask the question, like, you know, we were in such bad form as a club. Um, has the onset of the coronavirus pandemic actually lessened um, the media scrutiny and the scrutiny from the fans on the coach and certain players that weren't performing? Um, because obviously now the league has packed up, gone into hiatus. But um, yeah, given everything is being dominated by coronavirus now, we're not really talking about how bad this season was becoming. Um, it had become an absolute plane crash. And obviously that will be something that we do have to um, ignite the conversation around. Because um, the A-League will, you know, at some point come up again and, and function again. And obviously... Um, you know, we left in such a bad state as a club with Adelaide United um, on the pitch, just diabolical. Um, Bruce Dutte did come out um, on the Fox Sports Football Podcast, um, gave a very, uh, I guess you could call it um, a very truthful kind of insight into what's going on. He didn't beat around any bushes and uh, basically said, yeah, you know, there are a lot of issues to contend with. Um, fans have to be realistic. We're not going to sign any, you know, superstar marquees anytime soon. And um, he basically set out all the, um, you know, logistical issues that uh, the club has faced. And personally, him himself being in the role that he's in um, as the football director at the club. So you can go back and listen to those. Um, he gave that interview on a recent Fox, Fox Sports football podcast, um, as well as on the uh, SEN Dom and Dodzy show, um, so you can check that out. Um, but yeah, give me your thoughts. What are things going to look like for this football club going forward? Um, Import-wise, uh, what do you do there? Do you uh, end the Christian Opseth experiment? I'm going to be honest. I think yes, 100%. I've got no defense at all for Christian Opseth. He came in as our highest build import signing and he has failed to deliver. Um, so I would cry out for um, Christian Opseth to depart and for us to look at what we can do with bringing in another imported striker, hopefully one that uh, more closely resembles a figure like Serginho van Dijk who um, is the only ever uh, really successful striker that this club has kind of had, to be honest. Um, unless you look at the early days of Fernando Rec and um, Pablo Sanchez being like, you know, the classic import, uh, the, the classic impact uh, striker who um, obviously highlighted those glor glor glorified moments in our championship season. But um yeah, we haven't really had too much luck with strikers over the years, so I'd like to see Opseth depart and uh, and us looking at bringing in another player overseas to replace Opseth. Um, but yeah, Maria, um, is he's got another year left. Um, Jakobsen, I think his contract runs out. I think 
it would be logical to end Jakobsen's spell just because um, he's quite old, he's 35, and uh, he's certainly not had his best season. No one has, obviously, as we know at the club this year, but um, yeah, I think getting um, a new centre back, uh, replace Jakobsen, and obviously that frees up a import spot as well. Not that we've been using them all very well this season. Um, and Yongbin Chen is the other one. We don't know what's going to happen there. Can he even go back home to China with uh, the kinds of restrictions that are in place, uh, limiting travel between those countries? We don't know. Um, guys, that's basically everything uh, coming out of the A-League and Adelaide United, uh, more specifically within the last few weeks. Um, I'm going to try, keep doing these videos. Well, I won't try. I will keep doing these videos as regularly as possible, probably every week. Um, so we'll put together new agendas and try have some fun. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, it's a difficult time, so make sure you stay safe, stay healthy, and um, yeah, look after each other. And hopefully we will see each other on the other side whenever that will be. But uh, in the meantime, I will be doing live videos out of the Purebred Red studio. Um, we did have some guests lined up to close out the season, but obviously with social distancing in place, um, those shows are not going to happen now. So, um, yeah, whenever the, the league does get back underway, um, we assume that'll be without fans being able to watch um, and attend. Um, we will still do shows, but they'll just be in a different format to preview the games. So, um, yeah, that'll be kind of what happens on the other side when that, whenever that time comes. But uh, between now and then, whilst we're still in the dark with everything going on and there's so many issues that the FFA has to contend with, um, to try and secure some kind of vital infrastructure to see the A-League survive and exist long into the future. Um, but uh, yeah, the politics of the game is, and, and reliving past years, um, our 2016 A-League Grand Final, um, you know, is that something you've gone back and watched with all the time on your hands, perhaps not being at work every day now? Um, you know, shout out to me on the next video if that's the case for you. Um, but uh, yeah, other than the the politics of football and, um, you know, just nostalgic kind of, you know, Mark 1, A-League Season 1 and 2 highlight videos, the Asian Champions League run, um, you know, the, the start of uh, the Spanish Revolution with Josep Gombao, those kinds of great memories um, that we've got as a club going back on YouTube and watching them. Uh, those are the kinds of things that you guys are doing as fans of the club at the moment. Um, yeah. Let me know in the next video. But guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, yeah, been great bringing you another video uh, just to signify that Purebred Reds, the show will go on despite no football going on right now. So um, stay safe, guys. Have a great night. And um, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Cheers.